Hi there and welcome to our segment, Cut Through the Noise, where today we answer your questions that we've been hearing throughout the month. Today we're talking about depression level stock declines, inflation, where should young investors start, and how to prepare for a long-term care event. Stay tuned. Hi there, it's Alex and Anthony from One Degree Advisors. Today we're talking about bear markets, inflation. I mean, it's been really hot. I mean, there have been depression level style declines yeah. in certain stocks lately, yeah. especially in those popular names like the Amazons, Netflix, Peloton, Zoom. And these, these were stocks that really were high flying during COVID and, and stay at home. I mean, depending on the day you look, Amazon's down 30 percent, Netflix, uh, Zoom down over 60 percent. These are huge drops. Yeah, I kind of feel like it's the it's like that the stay at home bubble. Right. Yeah. People people talk about like the tech bubble. That burst. I feel like this is the stay at home. Giving bubble. it a name, huh? Yeah, everyone was, you know, everyone was staying at home. They're like yeah. Peloton, Zoom, like these changes are here to stay. Therefore, the stock valuations are justified. And soon we're finding out it's a lot harder to pick stocks yeah. than a lot of people will lead you to believe. People, you know, those self proclaimed experts, oh, just pick a handful of stocks. These are ready to grow. It's hard. And your entry point into these stocks is incredibly important. Yeah. Those trends do change. And I like this. So, so Jason, and I'm not going to butcher the last name, had a, had a nice little tweet um, that shows the internal NASDAQ damage, which we'll, we'll put on the screen here. More than 45% of stocks in the da NASDAQ down 50%, more than 22% stocks down 75%, and more than 5% down 90%. I mean, there's a good chance a lot of those stocks will never recover yeah. I mean, when you really think about it. Yeah. All right, next topic, inflation. Is it, are we at a breaking point in spending? Um, March numbers, we should be getting April here soon. March though, down up 8.5% uh, as far as inflation. Yeah, and of course, that's the question everyone wants to know is, are we at peak inflation? Is it gonna start to slow down? I mean, I think that's anyone's guess. I think it's a fool's errand to try and guess where inflation is headed from here because it really is unknown but this is pretty interesting so we'll, we'll put this on the screen here this was a chart from the wall street journal i'm sorry not a chart but a survey and again surveys aren't always right but it is interesting to see how spending might change and how people are reacting to this so again it goes through and it based upon your level of income it asks you know do you, are you going to reduce the number of items you typically purchase? Do you buy more store branded items when possible? Do you wait to buy a big ticket item? You can see for most of these cases, 40 to 50% of the respondents are saying yes to that, that they are going to slightly change their uh, consumer habits. And I'd like to know other people that are watching this. I mean, if they're changing their habits, yeah. how are they changing? We did recently make a video on I bonds, which can be a nice hedge for inflation, which yeah. we'll post right here and people can watch that as well. I think that maybe tells us something because there is a, a thought that when inflation really is kicking in, people will spend more because they're gonna, next time they go to the store, the prices are gonna be even higher. Exactly. So if people are pulling back on their spending, I mean, it's interesting to watch that and, you know, and, and really ask the question, has inflation peaked? I guess we'll find out here. All right, next question here. So where should young investors start? And I, I feel like I get this question a lot from parents you know, sometimes parents, they want to help their kids out. They want to give them a leg up, get them started early. But oftentimes it's like, well, where do, where do I even start? And what I like to first ask is, well, what's like the goal, right? Is right. the goal here to save for education? Is the goal is, well, you know, maybe education, but I'd also like them to have some funds, maybe if they want to start a business when they get older, right? Mm -hmm. The goal really dictates where we go from there, but it has to start with a goal. What's the goal and what's the purpose Again, when invest, you know, when you want to start um, investing when you're younger. Yeah, and when when young people are investing for themselves for the first time, it's you know thinking about okay, what type of account do I want to open? If I'm really am saving for the future, a Roth IRA, which can grow tax free, can be a, a fantastic tool. Trying to keep investments simple, mm -hmm. you know, using broad based index or index funds or ETFs uh, can make a lot of sense. If somebody is interested in like my youngest son, Henry, is interested in picking some stocks. So we, he, I helped him put some money in there and it just, yep. it raises some interest. Well, it helps keep him engaged, it does, right? Yeah. I mean, like for professional investors or more seasoned investors, we might say, you know, ETFs are the way to go, broad-based, diversified, education yeah. or uh, uh, evidence-based. For a younger kid, they might be like, you know, passing out, you know, right. <laughs> when you're talking about right. that, if you pick a couple of names that they like, I don't know, maybe like Starbucks or Roblox, 
those names have been you know kind of <laughs> kind of dicey lately but regardless it keeps them engaged and interested yeah. which might be the most important piece yeah our, our ignite platform for young investors that's why i just love that because i love seeing young people get involved in when it comes to to investing all right last topic here can i build investments to prepare for a long-term care event yeah and let's face it most people they they don't want to be a burden to their kids yeah. or their family we hear that a lot when you know, they might have a long-term care event. It's, you know, it's one of those things that it's unknown, but it's looming over a lot of people's heads. And the big issue is if you don't have a long-term care policy already, a lot of the long-term care policies, at least traditional long-term care policies, are incredibly expensive nowadays. Mm -hmm. So people are in a bit of a conundrum, right? They're thinking about that expense. They want to prepare but passing off that risk to an insurance carrier mm -hmm. by, balling, by, by buying a policy is really, really pricey. Yeah, over the last several years, the insurance companies have realized that they were mispricing it for a year too low mm -hmm. and therefore have increased the, the prices. So it, it does become difficult. And that's where people need to ask, you know, they may need to self fund. And mm -hmm. so looking and saying, okay, what could be the potential costs? And that's difficult because you don't always know for sure but then saying, okay, I'm going to keep a certain amount of my retirement savings that's really earmarked for healthcare yep. is a good uh, view to take when you're planning. So, so here's what I like to do just to keep it really, really simple without getting into a full financial plan. Genworth Cost of Care is a great tool which we will provide in the show notes. And the, what I love about this tool is that you can search by your area just to get averages and get a ballpark figure as right. to what different levels of care might cost in your area. So for example, in our area, on average, a home health aid might cost around $6,500 a month right. for what you need, right? A lot of people wanna stay in their home, $6,500 a month, again, on average is what yeah. you might be looking at. It can be a wide, a wide range there. Yeah. And I think they say that the average length of care is about two and a half to three years. So so take that baseline number, let's say of $6,500 a month yeah. and say, you know, I want this care for three years and know that long-term care expenses typically outpace inflation. So right. give that an inflation rate of maybe five or 6% and then say, okay, what do I need to save and build up in my investment portfolio to prepare for that event that might occur 10, 20, 25 years? down the road. Yep. It's not an exact science, but it's worth preparing. Absolutely. And now let us know what you think. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have more questions or want to learn more about I-bonds, watch the video above. We posted this not too long ago. Great information on a high savings rate for your cash. If you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.